What are your kids going to do after high school? No matter how young your kids are, I guarantee you, you have a thought about that question. Well, today we're taking the guesswork out and giving you a game plan. Hey there, and welcome back to another episode of Redefining Balance. I'm your host, Jenny Stemmerman, and today we are talking about your kids' future. Now, no matter how young your kids are, this episode is for you, especially if your kids are like middle school age, high school age, and really starting to think about what comes after high school. What should we be doing now in order to make sure our kids are successful, whether they decide to go to college or they choose another path in life. Now, as moms, especially working moms, this is something I know we all think about and we're trying to find time to fit in the things that we know might help them be successful, or even just finding the right people that can guide us along the way. And that's what we're going to be talking about today with our special guest, Beth Langston. Now, Beth is partnered with her husband, Greg, and together they have a company called College Flight Plan. Now, I love what they are doing because they are all about coming alongside the family unit and helping them find the right path forward. And if that's college, making sure that they are the most prepared possible for college. Because you guys, the college game is a totally different experience than probably when you and I were in college or preparing for college. And with all of those changes that have happened in that process, it is best to have the right people by your side. Now, Beth is gonna be sharing with us some tips on how you can prepare for college for your kids. But beyond that, even if it's not college, just how they can really prepare to be the best human beings as they launch into life. And these are the things that you want to start teaching your kids super young. And she gives examples of even really, really young kids on how you can start teaching them these principle-based, value-based things to help them grow as they move through life. Now, before I get into my interview with Beth, I do want to let you know that we have our new weekly success planning course completely for free that you can access by going to weeklysuccessplanning.com. As kids are going back into school and we're starting into new routines, it is a great way to help you create a new system for yourself or even just reshape an existing system that you have to help you be successful as you go into the school year. Again, you can check that out by going to weeklysuccessplanning.com. It's all brand new content and awesome things. And it's all totally for free. So go and check it out. All right. Without further ado, let's get into my interview with Beth. Welcome to Redefining Balance. Beth, I'm so excited to have you on talking about this topic of getting our kids ready for whatever comes next for them in life and really launching them into adulthood. But before we get into all of the great tips that you have to share for us, tell our audience a little bit more about who you are. Wow. Hi, Jenny. Thank you so much for having me. And I'm so honored to be here. You have been instrumental in relieving a lot of stress for working moms today. And I know you're greatly appreciated. And I too am a working wife, mom, and even a grandmother, which is the best gig ever, I must tell you. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, so my life is very blessed and full, and I am here to help alleviate the stress experienced by working moms of high schoolers and even junior high kids who are thinking of someday going to college or not going to college, but having more definition in what they want to do. And I love what I do. I have a degree in education from Purdue University, and I now live in San Diego and near two of my grandkids, which is wonderful. And I've been helping high school students to master their self-discovery for 20 years now. And I parlay that into writing great essays for their applications if they decide that's what they want to do. So that's what I do. Oh my gosh, this is so awesome. And I'm so glad that you're on here to talk about this because I feel like when we think about college or what comes after high school, there's so many paths that our kids could be taking. And I feel like it's almost becoming younger and younger and younger. I was sharing with you before we got started on this recording, even in fifth grade, my youngest son, they were kind of talking to him about college and college prep and, you know, teaching him things like time management skills and and organizing things through the lens of you need to be prepared for college. And I feel like when I was growing up, like, you know, you ask kids what they wanted to be when they grew up, but it was never about college preparedness so young. 
Why do you feel like that that has been such a change in our culture? Wow. You know, we really stress the earlier, the better in getting to know yourself as a person and your strengths and your weaknesses and your values and your goals and your purpose. And I think now because, well, the competitiveness of the college application process has gone through the roof. Back in the day, it wasn't quite like this. But now it's extremely competitive. And also college has changed a lot and it is not for everybody. And as young people go through learning about themselves and discovering their purpose, so many times they realize, "Uh uh-uh, college is not for me. I'm going to do something else. Or I'm going to take a year off and go explore other areas and my interests. You know, learning what their skills are, their God-given natural gifts are so key because whatever you're going to be doing, you want to be enjoying it as an adult or a young person in your job. Yeah. And I love that you mentioned too, that there are other opportunities out there other than college. And, you know, it's interesting perspective because I have a, I was sharing with you, my older son, he doesn't plan on going to college when he's done with high school. He has other plans for himself. He really wants to be a police officer. He wants to go in the military. (laughs) I'm not Mm -hmm. super excited about him doing any of those paths, especially in our current culture, but he feels like that's what God is calling him to do. And who am I to argue with that? So I'm trying to prepare him as best as possible because on the flip side of that, I run a couple businesses and the majority of our employees that we we have are kids that are college aged. And some of them are college students Mm -hmm. and some of them are getting degrees and things that I am just like, what in the world are you possibly going to do (laughs) with a folk art degree? Like I can't even imagine what that's going to be bringing for you. Other kids have like super strong plans. They want to be a high school math teacher and they're doing all of the right things in order to do that. And then we also have a, a handful of employees that are college aged but they chose not to go to college. And they're just kind of trying to figure out what they want to do in their life and kind of floating around a little bit. And I see the hardships that they have in doing that. And I I know for myself as a mom, and even as an employer for these, for these, I hate to call them kids, but they are kind of kids, but I would mm-hmm. love to give them some kind of a direction to help them kind of get that best foot forward in life. How great that those young people are working for you. We recommend strongly finding internships or jobs in areas of interest for kids and young people, because many times you get into it and you discover, oh, this isn't what I want to do at all. Our son is a great example of that. He always thought he thought he wanted to go into medicine, some form of medicine. So one summer he interned with cardiovascular surgeon and then a neurosurgeon. And at the end of the summer, he's like, this is not what I want to do at all, which was great to discover before college. And so then he decided he wanted to go into finance of all things, you know, so different than what he <laughs> yeah, thought he wanted to do. <laughs> and he's been very successful and done well. But, you know, of the kids that do go to college, 40% of them graduate in four years, 60% take six years. And that's because 60% of them change majors at least three times, but because they haven't done enough extensive self-discovery to understand their strengths and weaknesses and their purpose and their interests. So it's very disappointing and it costs a lot of money. You know, two years of the average cost of a college is 50000 in private. It's twenty seven in in-state tuition. But if you don't know what you want to do, and you go and you waste that money, then you're in debt for years. Yeah, yeah. And we hear so much about about college debt and student loan debt in the news. And and it's no wonder, you know, when you're just kind of there to explore and do things, but it is very expensive. And so I do think that it's important to kind of funnel in and think about what it is that you want to do. And as you were talking, I was even thinking, you know, even for people who are like not sure if their kids want to go to college or what that can look like, I still think it's important to prepare for college because the horrible thing to happen, right, is in your senior year, they just change their mind and they're like, I do want to go to college. And you're like, you're not prepared for college. So talk to us about what we can do. I know you have some action items of things that we can do well before senior year starts to help our kids have the most amount of options. And I, I think that that's the best way of kind of putting it is not necessarily college preparedness, but really preparing them for whatever choices they decide to make as they start to finish out that that high school career. So 
talk to us about that first one that you that you have for us. Well, first of all, empowering teens for academic success is key. And that has to start early. You know, the things that count if you're going to go to college and apply are everything that happens from the summer before freshman year on. Unless you have some extraordinary experience when you were younger that you can touch on. But this is what, if you are going to apply or if you're going to apply for a job, these are the things they want to know. They want to know who you are now, not who you were then when you were five, you know? Yeah. (laughs) And so we have to jump in freshman year and keep the GPA as high as possible because you don't want to spend the next three and a half years catching up. And building that GPA back, same thing for the kids that go to college. They've got to start strong freshman year with their academic success. And for those who are taking the standardized tests, get help. You know, you can't rely on the guidance counselors at schools to do everything for you in your test prep because they don't have time. There are 424 students to each one guidance counselor. That's the average in the United States. So they don't have time unless you're a squeaky wheel. You need to get out outside help in test prep. And also for those who are going to college, they will look at the quality of your curriculum. So those things start early. Don't wait till senior year to get those done if you do decide to go to college. And then this the is, sec- this is interesting. Ahead. Before you jump into the second one, yeah. just, you know, about getting outside help for standardized testing and it's interesting that you you mentioned that because I don't think that that was something that was really a thing at all when I was growing up and probably for a lot of our audience when they were getting ready for college about hiring a tutor or a coach mm-hmm. to kind of help you prepare for those tests. But, you know, as you're talking about things being so competitive when it talks about getting into college, I can definitely see why that's important. Now, with the GPA and the quality curriculum and and all of these things with coming out of the pandemic and a Mm -hmm. lot of people, you know, experiencing virtual school or kind of a hybrid school. I know for me, I feel like my kids have kind of fallen backwards a little bit, even though we chose to go homeschool. It was our first year homeschooling last year and it was Mm -hmm. not a smooth ride. (laughs) We made it through it. Um, And I love teaching them, but you know, it definitely does get me thinking about like, are they learning enough? And is it the right kind of things that they should be learning that are really going to help them in the future. So what advice do you have for anyone who maybe has middle schoolers or high schoolers going out of the pandemic and they're a little worried about what they've been learning in the last couple of years? How can they make up on that? You guys, it's back. Life Balance Method starts a new 12-week program on September 11th, and now is the time to sign up and get ready. You'll learn the life balance system to grow in every area of your life, be more productive, and build solid routines that are the backbone of balanced living, all while keeping you focused on putting God first in your life and living in community. The 12-week program includes weekly lessons to learn the system while you live it out. Plus, I'm gonna mail you a life balance planner as an extra resource to help you include the program and its principles in your everyday life. Now, these are audio lessons, which are easy to incorporate into your weekly routine and apply to your already busy life. Why not end the year strong and on the right note and let the next 90 days be the time frame that helps you get organized, clear, and ready to do all that God has called you to. You'll get lessons on each area of life, including your faith, marriage, parenting, home, finances, health, career, and friends and fun. Beyond giving order to these areas of life, you'll learn the monthly, weekly, and daily process of keeping everything balanced in your own unique way. Enroll early and save. Go to yourliferocks.com and click on the programs and resources to learn more. So what advice do you have for anyone who maybe has middle schoolers or high schoolers going out of the pandemic and they're a little worried about what they've been learning in the last couple of years? How can they make up on that? Yes, well, again, outside help. But first of all, I want to tell you, you're not alone. All the students have experienced that this year and we we have seen that firsthand and everybody's playing catch up and hopefully this year we'll be able to do that. But if you can get outside help, I think it's wonderful that parents have been able to peek over the shoulders of their children to see what's really going on in the classroom and what they're really teaching our kids. And sometimes it's not what we expect. So outside help, being involved, be involved as a parent. They say that students whose parents 
are involved in the school, either volunteering or tutoring or whatever your gift is to do, you know, the parent teacher association, whatever it is, they do better than kids whose parents are not involved at all. So if you have to get tutors, you can tutor in groups too. It doesn't have to be cost prohibitive all the time for students. So look for groups who need help in the homeschooling situation. Yeah, you can get a lot of homeschoolers that have different fortes or have found a teacher outside that's going to teach them Spanish or whatever language they're learning. But everybody's catching up this year. You know? And in yeah. the test prep area, I want to say this, in the standardized test prep area, I really recommend help on that because they will teach strategies. It's not all about what you know or how good you are at math. There are definite strategies to taking these tests to how a student should use their time wisely. And they provide practice tests. So I just wanted to Oh, that's that. great. Yeah. yeah. And one of the things I wanted to mention too about outside help that I never knew until I had mm-hmm. an employee working for me that is mm-hmm. going for a teaching degree. But it is beneficial for them and sometimes assigned to them to have Mm -hmm. a certain amount of tutoring hours and they will do it sometimes for free. So finding college students that are on an education stream, they might be available for tutoring at little to no cost. So I just wanted to throw that out there if you're looking for some outside help, but cost is an issue for you. That checking with the local universities around you could be a great option. Right. So true. So true. So now number two is really talking about the things outside of academics, and so is number three. But so talk to us a little bit about your second action item that we can do. Okay. It's helping teens get involved in extracurricular activities that are playing to their interests and their skills. For college admissions officers, they're not looking for a well-rounded student necessarily. They're looking for a well-rounded student body. So they're going to plug students in to where their little niches that they have that they need to fill. So what we recommend, and it's good for all of life. This is just not good for applying to college, but we recommend that students find projects where they can dig deep. You don't want like 350 volunteer hours in 350 different community projects. They want you to dig deep in one, find your interest, and get committed to it. They want commitment to an activity. They want leadership positions, not necessarily president of anything, but a team player has a great opportunity to be a good leader. Team player is key. It's a key quality that we all need to have. And If your child has an entrepreneurial spirit, that is wonderful. I mean, there are so many community needs that can be filled by students if they just put their thinking cap on and create an opportunity. For instance, there were two of my students were created during COVID for students that usually get their food at school, their breakfast or their lunch at school. And they were at home now and not getting the food they needed. They collected from their neighborhood. They drove their golf cart around and got food from all the people around. And they were created a website to get the word out. And everybody was more than happy to help. So it was wonderful. And then they took it to the foundation that could give this to the kids that needed it. So it doesn't have to be a huge thing to create, but just the feeling of giving back to your community. And as we talked about, internships are very key also, because that helps the kids develop what we call the three rings of success. When they're given a task, they have responsibility is what you take when you're given the task. That's one of the rings of success. It's responsibility, accountability, and reliability. So responsibility is what you take when you're given a job to do. Accountability is what you give back when completing the task. So you've done it, now you're accountable. And then reliability is your reputation that you gain as you consistently prove to be responsible and accountable. And of course, after all that, when they come together, the apex of reliability is referability. People are going to refer you for jobs. It's just a great way for a kid to build a reputation and get the word out there that he is responsible, accountable, reliable, and referable. I love it. And the thing I love about these three rings that you and your husband have put together in the work that you do to help empower teens is 
when I first saw it and saw the visual of it, which I will see if we can include into the show notes for everyone so they can have that visual as well. It just really empowered me as a mom to think about Mm -hmm. when I'm doing things around the house, even like household chores, or we're going on a family vacation, just looking for ways that my kids can grow in responsibility, accountability, and reliability. You know, obviously that's kind of like parenting 101, but I think sometimes (laughs) as especially working moms, we get so overwhelmed that we're like, as long as you're alive, I think we're doing okay. But this just kind of gives you a a little bit of a visual to think about how to prepare the people that we're raising to actually be good human beings when they leave the nest. Because whether they go to college or they do something else, these three skills are important. And as an employer of young people, these are not things that everyone possesses for sure. And so it's a huge leg up just to have responsibility, accountability, and reliability. Yes, totally. I agree. Absolutely. So Beth, any tips that you have for parents or especially moms out there listening to this on ways that they can really help their kids with these three rings of success? Because I'll be honest, sometimes raising teens, they're really motivated and sometimes they're really not very motivated. And I feel like I'm kind of pulling them along and being like, come on, you guys, this is what we need to be working on and this is what we need to be doing and it's good for you, I promise. So any last tips that you have for us on how to get our kids really excited about this or at least going along with it? Yes. Well, even if you're able to share the chart, putting it up on the wall and saying, look, here's what we need to be doing and almost, you know, rack up points for some reward in each area and that it's for their future. I know it's so hard for kids to start thinking about the future and they're really wrapped up in today and social media and all those things that are not beneficial sometimes, or they're wasting their time on, but some kind of reward system on this chart, put stars in it, and then whatever, however you reward your children, they would like that. And they'll start feeling better about themselves in these three areas of responsibility, accountability, and reliability. And maybe they've never had the opportunity for any of these areas. So start setting that up early when they're young. We used to do a a jar with our kids when they would make the right choices. This is little kids. We'd fill the jar with a ball. We'd put a ball in and when it got to the top, then they could go to the store and buy a toy of their choosing, you know? So oh, I love with that. Old, yeah. With older kids, you know, just that reward system, it helps in the beginning and then they start doing it themselves. You know, they take charge. Yeah, for sure. And I think sometimes they just need to know like what that actually looks like. So you can say, you know, work on being responsible. Okay. But what does that actually mean? And so once you start pointing out examples and praising them when they are Mm -hmm. responsible or when they are accountable, then they start to like, oh, okay, I get it now. Noticing when they do it right, catching them doing something good and positive, you know, that's the key. Catch them being accountable and use that terminology when you're speaking to them. Yeah. It really helps. I love that. Yeah. Well, Beth, you've done such an amazing, thank you so much for all of the work that you do and helping parents and helping kids kind of launch into life <laughs> that they're going to be doing. <laughs> I know that that is such a big step and full of, you know, not only tangible actions to take, but just emotions and and whatnot. And so I just am so glad to hear that you and your husband are are really following God's plan for your life and supporting other families in this transition. Now, if people want to work with you or learn more about what you guys are doing, how can they get a hold of you? Yes. Well, we are at collegeflightplan.com and you can email me directly, Beth, at collegeflightplan.com. For your listeners, I've also gotten a parent starter kit to teen self-discovery. If you go to collegeflightplan.com slash guide, it includes key statistics parents need to know and the top five early actions that lead to college success, free assessments we recommend, ACT, test prep, and how to get in touch with us again. But Beth at collegeflightplan.com is how you can reach me directly. Beautiful. And we will link to Beth and her website and her email and that great tool. Thank you so much for that. It's very generous in our show notes and also in our Facebook group. Beth, thank you so much for coming on the show. It was such a pleasure to get to know you and to learn from you today. Well, thank you, Jenny. Thanks for having me. Hey, thanks for hanging out with me today. Just because the show is over doesn't mean we have to stop hanging out. Hit subscribe and dive into another episode or jump on over to my YouTube channel for more content to help you thrive as a working mom. Ready to get into action? 
You can find a number of resources at yourliferocks.com, including the free weekly success planning course. Sign up for free at yourliferocks.com. Talk to you soon.